being here last week. So good to be back. And she's here with us for the very first time. We're very excited. Won't you please welcome Miss Danette Rivas. Thank you. Good morning, Unity. Good morning. Hope you guys have been having a fantastic Sunday. I'm very happy to have you to be here with you guys. Join me. Standing outside the door of love and mercy. You wonder if there's a place there for you. You know there's peace inside, but still you're searching for someone who understands the pain that you've been through. But the Father waits with open arms. He's calling out your name. Come on in, welcome home. You are loved, you belong here now. No matter where you've been, come on in. You'll find a place of rest in the arms of the Spirit. He's waited so long for your homecoming day. He knows the peace you need and the hurt you're feeling. He wants to hold you and to wipe your tears away. For the door's unlocked, the lights are on. What are you waiting for? Join me. Come on in. Welcome home. You are loved. You belong here. No matter where you've been, come on in. There is room enough in the home of love for someone just like you. Come on in, welcome home. You are loved, you belong here now. No matter where you've been, Welcome. Yeah. Jeanette Ruiz is with us for the first time today, but she is not unfamiliar with Unity, so welcome so much. If you haven't met me yet, I'm Bev Spivey. I co-minister here with my husband, Reverend Lawrence Palmer, and we look forward to talking with each of you today. And the rest of our music team is here. Alive, alert, awake, enthusiastic, under the direction of James McCoy. Good morning. We have Mr. John Rose with us once again at the piano. That's Pedro Barroas at the drum set. We met Danette Rivas. I'm so glad she's here. We have music today. Who's it from? From Yolanda Adams and Faith, Faith. Rivera. Actually, you might recognize Faith Rivera's name as well as Yolanda Adams because she's written a lot of songs for New Thought churches and Unity churches. So, yeah. Looking forward to another wonderful day together. So, let's begin by remembering what we're all about here. We have a theme for the year, which is courage to imagine, remembering to employ our power of imagination throughout our whole life and not giving up on imagining once childhood is over. So this month, the theme uh, is to be bold and confident, not in an egoistic way, but from our divine self. And our lessons and study will center around being firm in our understanding and confident with our belief in God as love and all of the many other principles that we hold so dear. So won't you join me? Back up one minute, Carmen. Let's say this affirmation together. Together, I am bold and confident. I live with divine audacity. Yes. Okay, and now our vision together. Centered in God, we create an ever-expanding space. 
spiritual community of one. In our mission statement together, we are a spiritual beacon of inspiration, abundance, and enlightenment. And let's take that into a moment of prayer. It's always so joyful to begin here in the mornings and feel the sense of community, the sense of acceptance and inclusion of everybody who's here today. We reach out and hold you all dear as you hold us in knowing that indeed we live with confidence in the spirit of God within. And so as we center into this moment, into this next hour of celebration of the life we live, we are so grateful. We are so very grateful. And so it is. Amen. And true to our practice of using different prayers uh, every week, let's join together in the traditional prayer from the Old Testament, the 23rd Psalm. Together, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And let's all stand now and sing together. I consider this song a unity standard. We've been singing it for so many years. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Let's all sing together. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up. To see you high and lifted up. Shine in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. See you high and lifted up. Shine in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Good morning. Sunday of the month. And one of the things we do on the first Sunday of the month, I get to spend some time with the kids, or today, kid. So, Catherine, come on up. Just turn the light on mine. 
I'm gonna let it shine. Hardly get anymore. This little night of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. It's really funny, I noticed earlier she's grown about a foot and a half since I got here. And I think I've shrunk a couple of inches. <laughs> Well, you know that every month we have a word that we look at, that we study all during the month. And this month the word is, is that me? Well, I'm just too powerful this morning. Maybe I should tone it down a little. Nah. <laughs> okay. The word for this month for us is confidence. I bet you know what confidence means. What does it mean? Yeah, yeah. To believe something's really true. Really, really, really believe that something's really, really, really true. And that's a good thing. I bet you have a lot of confidence, don't you? I have no doubt about that. Well, you know, one of the things that we do when we're on the spiritual path is when we know something good, we want to tell other people about it. We want to share it with other people. If you know where great pizza is, you tell people where great pizza is, yeah? You know where you can get some great snow cone. You like snow cones? Okay. <laughs> she probably doesn't even know what a snow cone is anymore. <laughs> There's actually a bunch of snow cone trucks at like some of the events I went to. Very good. Those things, yes. Well, if you know where they're good, then you tell people, right? Yeah. And if you know about confidence, you're going to run around telling everybody, right? Eh, maybe not, huh? Yeah. Because confidence is something that happens inside of you. And you don't really want to go around telling everybody they ought to be more confident and this is how you do it. Most people wouldn't receive that very well. So there's a great way to spread confidence around without being obnoxious. You know what obnoxious means too, don't you? I thought so. <laughs> well, one way is just to be confident. And be that way everywhere you are and be it naturally. You, do you know anybody that's a smart aleck? You know? just knows more than everybody else and is pleased to tell everybody else how much they know. Like, you don't like smart alex, no? They kind of get in the way. Well, we don't want to be smart alex out in the world, but we can live confidently, naturally, and just be exactly who we are, and I think you do that very, very well. And what we need to remember is that when we're out in the world being confident, other people look at us and say, wow, I want to be confident like that too. So they start doing things like you do. And they become confident too. So even though we didn't tell them, say, you need to be more confident, they end up being more confident because they look at us. Isn't that cool? Same thing, when you're happy, you go out and people look at you happy and they get more happy. And if you're sad and you go out and people look at you, what happens? They become sad. They get more sad. So that, that's an important thing for us to remember. So I would challenge you during this month in all of your travels and doing around and the things you're going to be doing, just to be your natural self and be very confident in everything you do and let people watch you and learn. Think you can do that? Yeah. You think you have to try hard to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Go. Thank you. <laughs> Now this youngster, kids' time continues, <laughs> has a special day coming up next Sunday. And the Sunday after that is Father's Day, and so we didn't want to wait a couple weeks to acknowledge her, so we're a week ahead of ourselves. But I want you to know that Libby Lay has been studying at the Sacred, is it Sacred Journey Interfaith Seminary, and she will be ordained and graduating next Sunday. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not going to let you go about blessing you. Yeah. And you know, we always bless every chance we get in unity, and we bless everything, especially times like this. So we want you to give Libby a very special blessing in our unity way. If you hold your hands up and join us, Libby, we love you. Libby, we bless you. Libby, we bless you. 
Libby, we see the divine light shining through you. And we know you are destined for great things. And I have one thing I want to tell you about. There was an old minister one time. Oh, no, a story. Why not? Attending an ordination, and he went up to the attendee and said, if you're going to tote the light, tote it right. <laughs> All right, tote so, it right. So we are trusting you to tote the light right. Thank you. God bless you, dear. And if you happen to be here for the very first time, we want to give you a warm welcome. If you would just raise your hand, we have a brochure we want to give you that talks about unity. So welcome, Jason, Michael. Ah, there's somebody back there I haven't met yet. Welcome each and every one of you. We want you to know that we are sincere in our welcoming. No matter where you're church life, spiritual path, or lack thereof has been prior to this day, turn the page and know that this is a warm and inviting spiritual community, and each and every one of you is very welcome. So feel at home here, and afterwards we always have social time in Fellowship Hall where we have some snacks and refreshments. So if you've been coming for a while and haven't yet gone to Fellowship time, check it out. And certainly if you are here for the first time today, you are very welcome to do that. The other important thing to us is prayer. Unity is founded on prayer, and we have prayer chaplains who dedicate their time all during the week to pray with us in mind. And we have prayer chaplains available to you a half hour before this service, so every Sunday at 1030 there is a prayer chapel, the first room on the right in this next building, and you're invited to go in there for quiet prayer, either with a chaplain or on your own, but that is a time uh, for some centering before you start into your day and your week. Chaplains are also available at the end of the service to pray with you. I don't always remember to announce that they are standing there, so uh, whether or not I make the announcement, know that our chaplains are available to you. We also have prayer slips that are in the chair backs for you to fill out your prayer requests. There is a prayer box at the back of the uh, sanctuary. It's brought forward during our prayer time. That reminds us to hold each other in prayer. And the chaplains then take those prayer requests and pray over those requests immediately after the service and then keep their mind on it throughout the week and pray with you. And then we send them on to Unity Village where it's 24-7 for a month of prayer in the Silent Unity Prayer Chapel, which is a very powerful place having had continuous prayer for more than 100 years. Continuous meaning day and night, every day, holidays included. So take advantage of our prayer program. Now some announcements. Ministry leaders, first Sunday of the month we always meet. Uh, this is for our just staying in touch with each other. If you're interested in becoming one of our chairmen, one of our ministry leaders uh, of our many volunteer teams here, you are welcome to come to that meeting as well. We have ushers and greeters and fellowship uh, people who set up and clean up, and we have, oh my goodness, building and grounds and just so many things going on. Dina Schimmick is our volunteer coordinator. Dina, would you just raise your hand? Uh, you can, <laughs> thanks, Dina. We have such a good time here because we have so many volunteers, and uh, we are very proud of that and grateful for it. So see Dina if you'd like to get involved. It's a good way to feel part of the community and, and meet other people as well. Next, when, uh, not next Wednesday, but this Wednesday, is our meeting of the book club. And I tell you what, we're going to be talking about whistling past the graveyard. If you have not read this yet, you have time to read it by Wednesday night. I'm telling you what, I couldn't put this book down. I was trying to read 
a chapter, you know, or two during my lunch time, and a chapter or two in the morning, and a chapter or two in the evening. And finally, after a couple days of this, I said to Lawrence, forget it. I can't work today. I got to finish this book. <laughs> it's written, and it's, I don't know, maybe other people are different, but it's written in the voice of a nine-year-old girl. And so you hear her fracture the grammar and, and misunderstand what wor big words are. And you see her perspective on life and the choices she's making. And sometimes you want to say, oh, no, don't do it. Don't, don't. So it's a great book, Whistling Past the Graveyard. In July, we are having a very special event. And this is an opportunity. You know, so many of you say, gosh, we have such a wonderful community here. How do we let people know about it? We certainly are not your grandma's church, are we? And people don't know what to expect when they hear about church. And it could bring up all kinds of memories for them, good or bad. This is not a church event. This is not a spiritual event, but it's every bit as important. It is about peace. We sing every week, let peace begin with me. This is a peace literacy workshop that will be a Friday evening. Saturday 10 to 5, Sunday workshop. And uh, Paul Chappelle, who will be coming from California to do the workshop, will be our guest speaker that Sunday. We are doing these on love offering basis. Saturday for the full day is just $40. I would ask, implore you, to invite community members who are interested in peace, educators of all sorts, administrators, college people, high school people involved with that, students. This is a way for us to learn more about peace because we, we don't really learn how to do that. So tickets are on sale at our website. You just click a link, and we'd love to get this promoted as much as possible. And then we have uh, coming up for you, this is a preview of our education week in October where we'll, we will be teaching those four classes every day, Monday through Friday. Nine o'clock, Healing and Wholeness with Reverend Luzette, who was formerly the minister at Unity of Hollywood. Cynthia will be teaching Foundations of Unity, Cynthia Roberts, our licensed Unity teacher. Reverend Lawrence will be teaching Metaphysics, and I will be teaching Overview of the Christian Scriptures. So we're hoping that you will pick one, two, three, or all four of these and come out. We're giving you a preview of this so that you can have time to think about it. Uh, there is a fee involved because these are Unity credit courses. And for those of you who are willing to volunteer and help us out, we have greatly reduced the fee. So Cynthia is here today. Where are you? There's Cynthia. If you would see Cynthia, if you were interested in being a student, nothing formal today. We're just getting an idea of how many we may have. So that'll be October 22nd to 26th. And lastly, are you craving to visit Cuba? Hankering to see Havana? <laughs> Ron and Chris uh, are, are mastering the alliteration and preparing the slides in addition to preparing a wonderful cruise for us, Heavenly Havana, February 26th to March 2nd. We will be a day and a half in Havana with no time wasted coming or going. So we are going to look forward to a time together. They have been researching to get the best deal. Next week they will have a flyer for you and the week after that, and the weeks in the coming at, towards the end of June, we will actually be signing up for the state rooms and getting ready for this cruise. Ron and Chris, if you'd raise your hands. So if anybody can't stand to wait till next week, talk to them today in Fellowship Hall. So let's all stand now and greet each other.
stops we all sit back down thank you good morning everybody Good morning, I'm Ron Smith, and I'm here to read the daily word for today, which is divine order. The order of spirit is always unfolding. The order of spirit is always unfolding if I have eyes to see. I may mistakenly focus on appearances. Prayer is not a magic wand, but a way for me to change how I see things. I close my eyes and shift my vision to a bigger picture of the activity of the divine in and through me. I open my mind to new revelations of spirit's good in my life. With each breath, divine energy lives as me. I gratefully surrender to the spiritual certainty that my life is in divine order. Like seedlings growing in fertile soil, new thoughts of harmony and abundance take root in my mind. I see with greater clarity the order constantly unfolding. And the scripture for today 
is he changes times and seasons. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. From Daniel 2, 21. Right now as the prayer chest comes forward, we'd like to begin a time of prayer and meditation by singing together, I am at peace. I invite you now to find that very comfortable and familiar position for your body. And as you settle into that position, you can give your body permission to relax, to let go, to let be. And with that loving permission, your body will immediately move its focus from the outer to the inner. You can also give your mind that same permission to relax, to be still, because this is a time of being. So there's nothing you need to do, nothing you need to think about, but be present. So with body at ease and mind at ease, your awareness is free to commune with spirit. And in that freedom, your awareness sinks deep into your heart, deep into that center of your being. And as you sense and experience that center, you know that you're in the midst of a great celebration here. Many things going on, many things happening, yet in the center of it all, there is that place of pure peace and pure presence. And you are immersed in that place now. You are enfolded in that state of consciousness. You are embraced in the pure presence of spirit. And in that stillness, there is freedom. There is joy. There is light. So as you allow your awareness to be just to be in that center. It may be for you an experience of profound stillness, or it may be a time of sound and images and colors and feelings. It is your time with spirit. Allow it to be what is authentic for you. So as we have prepared, let us now Allow our awareness to fully sink into that deep within, that secret place of the Most High, that inner home. Let us be there together.
Now, as you prepare to move your awareness back to your body, back to this time and space, you know that even an instant during which your awareness is immersed in that deep of your heart, that healing and transformation take place. And you know that you can bring with you into your body, into your mind, into your heart, the essence of this experience and the stillness. It is yours. And in this coming week, as you choose to, you can simply stop, take a breath, and recall the blessing of this time and be blessed once again. So with a deep sense of gratitude for this opportunity of being together in this very special way, I invite you to take a deep, slow breath in through your nose, hold it for a moment, and exhale slowly through your mouth. When you're ready, open your eyes, and we will sing together, Alleluia. Alone in a room It's just me and you I feel so lost Cause I don't know what to do Now what if I choose The wrong thing to do I'm so afraid Afraid of disappointing you, so I need to talk to you and ask you for your guidance, especially today when my world feels so cloudy. Guide me until I'm sure I am. My hopes and dreams are fading fast I'm all burned out And I don't think my strength is gonna last So I'm crying out to 
you and ask you for your guidance especially today when my world seems so cloudy guide me until I'm sure I open up my heart so show me how to do things in Arribas. Well, if I hadn't been ready to preach two minutes ago, it would be now. My goodness, thank you, Ben, as always. Well, as you know, this month is about confidence, being confident. I want to share with you today some ideas about confident being and next Sunday about confident living. There is a difference. The scripture from today comes from Psalm 27. O oh God, do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me spouting malicious accusations. But I remain confident of this, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and take heart, and wait for the Lord. It is my goal today, for those of you who feel like you have no confidence, to inspire you to at least embrace a basic sense of confidence. For those of you who have so-so eh, sense of confidence... I hope to inspire you to step up to having a strong sense of confidence. For those of you who have a strong sense of confidence, I hope to inspire you to look beyond and to expect something beyond anything you've ever known before. Got my work cut out for me, don't I? Well, let's begin, as I always do, by asking what. What is this thing called confidence? Now, usually the way I start my research is to going to this great research tool called Google. It still amazes me to imagine myself 10 years ago standing up before I preach and say, I Googled this. 
but I did. It gives me an idea of how interested the world is, and that may be right or wrong, but how interested is the world in this particular topic? 665 million entries under confidence. So, seems to be pretty important then. Well, if it is that important and that interesting, how do we go about getting it? Let me give you a little more understanding of how the world looks at confidence. The dictionary definition it is a feeling or a belief that one can rely on someone or something. It is having a firm trust. Or the state of feeling certain about the truth of something. Or a feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of one's own qualities or abilities. So that sounds pretty good. That would be something good to have. So how do we go about getting it? Or increasing it. Now we can look at confidence from two different perspectives, at least two different perspectives, and one of them is a human perspective. Confidence is something that we have as humans, naturally, or it can be natural if we allow it to be. So how do we go about increasing our human confidence? Now one of the ways, and I, I did not study all 665 million references to confidence, but I looked at a lot of them. And I kind of distilled them down into what's being said about confidence and how you increase it, how you go about gaining more of it. And one of the ways I was surprised to find is something you've heard before, and that is fake it till you make it. You know, if you don't have the confidence, pretend you do. And that's a, va a valid way of approaching it, actually. It sounds kind of hokey, but it, it is. And, and, and there's, a, there's a more sophisticated way of saying fake it you, if until you make it, and that is, act as if. That sounds very nice and studious there. Same thing anyway. But we, we do this all the time as kids. How many of you as kids ever pretended something? We all did. It's a way of learning. Even in the animal kingdom, if you've ever watched the, 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 the baby animals and how they play with each other, they're practicing being adults. You know, they fight with each other and they roll around and carry on. Well, that's going to come as an adult. So they're pretending that they're an adult and it's preparing them. And, and sometimes when we pretend something, when we act as if something, it helps prepare us for the real situation coming along. It gives us a chance to see what's going to happen when the real situation arises. How many of you ever rehearse? saying something to somebody. Perhaps you've got something a little dicey to talk about. You don't just go and spontaneously start talking about it. You rehearse it in your head. I'll say this, and they'll say this, and then I'll say this. Well, wait a minute, what if I said this, and they said this, and that? Well, sometimes you get to doing that ad nauseum, and you forget to stop practicing. But this is a valid way for us to gain confidence, is to act as if. If I have a sense, at least an intellectual understanding of confidence, I can say to myself, now, if I had strong confidence, how would I feel and think when I'm going to sleep tonight? And then pretend, do it. If I had really strong confidence, how would I feel and think when I wake up in the morning? Pretend, do it. I've got a meeting to go to. I've got a presentation to make. If I was really, really confident, how would I act? Pretend, act as if it is yours, and it begins to rub off. That practice begins to show up in everyday life. Now, there's another way that we can do that, and I had these in pairs. The other pair is to accentuate the positive. Now, there's something good about everybody. There's something good in everybody, even you. And even on the worst days, there's something good in you. Even in your deepest doubts, there is something good in you. The Bible says if there's anything worthy of praise, think on these things and not the other. So on one side, there's the accentuating the positive. Acknowledging, and this is not pretending, but acknowledging that there's something good about you. You may not think that you're really good at something, but do you care? Well, yes, you do. That's something good. Do you have compassion for people? That's something good. Do you have aspirations? That is something good. 
So if there's anything at all about you that you can say is good, focus on that. Accentuate that. And the other side of the coin is to diminish the negative. Any of you ever engage in negative self-talk? You may not have somebody in your life telling you you're stupid, but how often do you tell yourself that you're stupid? That happens. How many times do you doubt yourself? How many times do you question things about yourself? How much time do you spend doing that? Is that necessary for you to live? Are you going to starve to death if you stop being negative? No, no. Are you going to cease to exist if you stop being negative? No. Are you going to still be able to breathe if you stop being negative? Well, yeah. So we can put the negativity aside deliberately, stop focusing on the negative, and focus on the positive. Now, it's not quite that easy for most of us because you have to do it over and over again. All right, I'm going to accentuate the positive. Before you know it, that old negative thought creeps back in there. And you can say, I know you. Get back in the corner and bring up the positive and dwell on that, hold that, nurture that. Imagine this being the truth about you all the time. And that begins to grow your confidence naturally. Now, another way of, of gaining confidence and, and, and increasing your confidence is to imitate people who are confident. When you see somebody who's doing what you want to do, then imitate them. That's okay. They say that imitation is the highest form of flattery. So if you see somebody you want to imitate, then do it. Bev, close your ears on this story. So, a number of years ago, when I lived in St. Louis, I had the opportunity to teach in the Holmes Institute which is the ministerial education program for religious science churches. And I got to teach preaching. And I was giving my students some tips about things. And I said, one, and this was out of the, away from the textbook, though. This wasn't written down anywhere. But I said, you know, what color for you is power? And it was pretty much unanimous, red's power color. <laughs> so I told my students, I said, one thing you can do is to use that color to Amp up your preaching, and what better way than to do that than to wear red underwear? <laughs> so I told all my minister, my students to, for preaching, wear red underwear when you preach. And several of them did and said, wow, it works. <laughs> Part of it was thinking... <laughs> what? Part of it is thinking, I'm wearing red underwear, nobody knows it. And that's just... That just has to be fun. But having that sense of power was really good. That was one thing that they imitated and get, increased their confidence. Another thing I do as a minister, I have a little bundle of bird bones wrapped up in a red ribbon. I had someone who had been to a um, shamanic powwow, and she was in this area the this, this shaman was teaching, and she noticed he kept looking at her, and after the teaching time was over, he called her over and he said, this is, this is yours. And he gave her a bag, of, a, a um, bundle of bird bones tied with this red ribbon, which is very symbolic. And he said, when you know who this belongs to, give it to them. And then he left. So she'd carried this bundle of bones around with her. And she visited our church one day. It wasn't a regular, or she'd never uh, attended before, and she came in. And when she started to leave, she said, I have something for you next week. So the next week she came, and she said, here, and I held my hand. And she put this little bundle of bird bones, about six bird bones, and a bundle about this big. She put it in my hand and said, this is yours. She said, a shaman gave this to me and told me to give it to who it belongs to, and it's yours. And she left and never saw her again. But as you know, bird bones are hollow. And this is one of the images that, that is used for, for the flow of spirit. Very often, uh, the shamans will say, make me as a hollow bone so that spirit can flow through freely. Every Sunday morning, I hold that little bundle of bones in my hand, and I say, spirit, make me as a hollow bone and pour through me. It's very powerful. And I shared that story with my ministerial students. And I said, find some anchor to the power of spirit and use it before you preach. And they did. And it worked. 
So if you want to gain confidence, imitate the confidence of others. See what works for somebody else and try it for yourself and make it your own. And you may find something totally unique in your life. Find something that represents that power, that sense of confidence, something tangible that you can touch, that you can hold on to, and use it to increase your confidence. So look at the world and see other people who are more confident than you and say, how'd they get there? And do what they did. Now I want to tell you something else you're not going to see. I didn't see anywhere in all the hundreds of references I checked about confidence. didn't see this anywhere, and you probably won't hear anybody else say it. And listen carefully. Look around you and see the people around you who have less confidence than you do. Think you can find somebody who has less confidence? You probably can. And when you do, look at them not in a way of saying, oh, you have less confidence than I do. And put them down. That's not what I'm talking about doing. But recognize that you are somewhere. A little confidence is more than none. And if you're asking the question, if you have the concern about confidence, you have a little bit. And when you look at someone who has none, it reminds you that you do have a little bit. Not to say you're better than that other person or they're less than you at all, but just as a point of reference to say, wow, I'm not on the bottom. I'm not without confidence totally. I do have this little bit, and on that little bit I can build. Jesus said if you had faith like a mustard seed, you could move a mountain. If you have a tiny shred of confidence, you have something to build on. And now I've given you a few tools that you can use to do that, to build, to increase your confidence, regardless of whatever level it may be. There's always that possibility of moving forward with it. Now this is good because as you develop your human consciousness, your, your human confidence, you're able to do things out in the world. It allows you to step out boldly and make things happen. Our affirmation about being bold and what? Audacious. How many of you have been audacious lately? Well, now you're going to now. This can take you very far down the road. However, human, human I keep wanting to say consciousness. Human confidence is really good. It's noticeable. And it's something we certainly should desire. But have you ever known anybody who got all the success they wanted and they still weren't satisfied? Have you known anybody who's really confident and still itching for something else? That's natural. That doesn't mean something's wrong. It's because we are not only human beings, but we are spiritual beings. So just as there is human confidence, there is also spiritual confidence. Human consciousness gives us what we need to go out into the world and do difficult things and to set challenges for ourselves and accomplish things out in the world, face difficulties. Spiritual confidence allows us to step beyond what is human, beyond what is physical. What is that word we use around here all the time? What am I teaching in SEE? Metaphysics, which means beyond the physical. Spiritual confidence is about the metaphysics of life. Same thing we said before. How in the world do we increase then our spiritual confidence? You get told that all the time, and you have opportunities for that all the time. Prayer. One way. You ever hear about prayer around here? Yeah. Wonder why? When we pray, we increase our spiritual consciousness. If I say consciousness, I mean confidence, okay? <laughs> Just for this, all right? When we pray, we increase our spiritual confidence. What's another thing you hear about all the time around here? Meditation. When you meditate, you increase your spiritual confidence. When you use this wonderful tool called denial and affirmations, you increase your spiritual confidence. Now, a denial, th there are words we use in metaphysics that are also used out in the world, but in a very different sense. If somebody told you that you were in denial, that means you, go have, to get, you have to go get psychotherapy. Because denial is a psychological affliction that you need to get healed from, right? Well, metaphysically, it doesn't mean that. 
Metaphysically, denial means, and this is a Palmer definition, metaphysically, denial means to withdraw your identity from any outer situation. Now, several weeks ago, I shared with you about four affirmations. What's the first affirmation? I am. Don't say it like I am. I am. That is who you are. Denial means to withdraw your I am from the stuff out in the world. No matter how bad the situation is in the world, you are not the situation. No matter how much pain we are in, we are not the pain. No matter how hurt and disappointed we are, we are not the hurt and the disappointment. We're having those experiences. And denial means to withdraw your identity from those things. I may feel pain. I may feel disappointment. I may feel challenge. But I am. So denial means to bring that identity right back where it belongs right here. And then the affirmation means to follow that with whatever you need to. I am prosperous. If the challenge is there, I am whole. If the challenge is there, I am love. If the challenge is there, and every time we use denial and affirmation, guess what happens to our confidence? It increases, it becomes stronger the more that we practice. So we can increase our human confidence, we can increase our spiritual confidence. And we become stronger all the way around. And one more thing that you don't hear very much either, at least I've never heard it that much either. And that is another way of increasing your spiritual confidence is to choose to. To choose to. There's an incredible power in this. And the mistake I, I, uh, I hear and see all the time in the spiritual realm is that we think that we have to be one or the other. We're either all spiritual or we're nothing. I'm either on top of the world or I'm being crushed by it. Because that's what the circumstances are. And it's out there somewhere. You get to choose what you believe is true. I've told people at the risk of losing my saint status. um, (laughs) There are times when I don't feel very spiritual. There are times when I think I'm about to come out of my skin because I am so full of spirit. And there are times when I just want to levitate and get it over with. And there are times when everything is so clear and so perfect. There are a lot of times like that. But there are a lot of times when I wake up and go, you know, the world just kind of lays there and does nothing. And I go looking for beauty and it just goes, bleh. Those days happen too. And on those days, I don't trust what's happening out there to determine how I'm going to feel and how I'm going to think. I choose to believe the truth even when the truth is not evident. I choose to feel full of the Spirit even when the Spirit seems to be absent. I make that choice because I can. And we get to choose every moment. Am I going to look in the dark? Am I going to look in the light? I get to choose every morning what I, whether I, ch- I believe what the world is telling me or what my heart is telling me. I get to choose. And I look at my world and I say, what makes the most sense here? There's no physical evidence out there anywhere that God even exists when you're in that space. Yeah? There's no evidence out there that anybody loves me at all. But I choose to believe differently. I choose to believe that there is a divine presence. I choose to believe that there is oneness that I am immersed in. I choose that no matter what. And guess what that does to my spiritual confidence? It takes it right up. So we have all kinds of ways of doing that, of being confident. I want to close with two quotes. One many of you have heard. It is erroneously attributed to Nelson Mandela because he used it in one of his speeches. It actually comes from Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? 
You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us. It is in every one of us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. And the second quote is what I started with this morning from Psalm 27. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart and wait for the Lord. And be strong in confidence. And now it's time for us to be confidently grateful for everything we have here and to share in our giving and receiving because so many of you give in so many ways. We are the recipients of that. We put on so many programs and activities here that we want you to feel the recipient of. So we want you all to know that we're so very grateful for the gifts that you do give for those of you who give on a regular basis, we really appreciate that. To our live streamers, we didn't officially welcome you today, but we're glad you're tuning in as part of us this morning. And um, we invite you to press that donate button. And any of you during the week, when you want to uh, perhaps sign up on a regular giving program, you can do it through that link on our website, or you can give at any time. So we thank each and every one of you for all that you give here and the many ways that you do give. Let us remember to shop on Amazon. Uh, Amazon Smile will give us a small amount of your purchases. So let us bless our offering. Together, I give as an act of joy. As we have been blessed through the Creator's good pleasure, so are our gifts drenched in joy. Today I declare joy for myself and all others. Joy is mine. Joy and more joy is mine. Everywhere I go, I see joy. I feel it. I experience it. I freely give it. And it multiplies itself around me. And so it is. Child of life, what are you? A daily expression of the life. When is the time? Right now, forever will be where inside of me. How standing as one, standing as one. When I accept that I am a child of life, we will stand as one for humanity. When you accept that you are an expression of that life, we will sing as one. Join us, join us, unity. Come on. When you accept that Uber is happening right now, you will sing. yourself as you are you will be the change for you are the change let us be the change standing as one standing as one standing as one come on one standing as
to close out today. Our chaplains are taking their positions in the outer aisles. Please do have a word of prayer with our chaplains. They'll teach you about denials and affirmations. David, so good to see you here, crutches and all, and all the rest of you that made it out today. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Let's bless each other as we leave today. Together, the light of God surrounds us the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Let there be peace on earth. Sunday, everyone. See you next one.